Hello, my name is William Lee McClendon, and this is my Art 110F final. For this presentation, I'll be speaking about the painting called Return of the Prodigal Son by Rembrandt, details of the painting, the biblical context of the painting, and the historical information about the artist himself. Rembrandt von Rijn's Return of the Prodigal Son is dated to be made in 1665, the Dutch Golden Age within the Renaissance era. It is oil on canvas and it's located in the Hermitage Museum at St. Petersburg and was acquired in 1766. There is a clear essence of hierarchy in terms of the subjects. The Barkle son and his father are the subjects of the painting and thus the level of light is most emphasized on them. And every other character are not directly in the center of the painting rather the center of attention regarding how everyone is focusing their eyes on them. And due to the lighting, there are the individuals who would also be the first to be spotted by the viewer of the painting. In contrast to the prodigal son and his father, there is one individual who has fairly decent lighting to be noticed with relative ease. However, there are three individuals in the background who are in the darkness and are further away from the front of the painting there is a woman in the background with village clothing who is not visible while looking directly on the father and son because they are too far in the darkness to be seen while looking directly at the father and son. Regarding the lack of general light in the wall in the background, it is clear that they are in some city during a very late time of the day. The artist had a nice touch with the details of the painting regarding facial features, and the portrayal folds on the clothing articles as well as the dirt on blisters on the sun, which emphasizes the theme of naturalism. Rembrandt in his painting has done an excellent effort emphasizing the social status of the various characters in this painting. The particle sun has very wrinkled and dirty clothing and does not have shoes, while the woman in the painting has the clothing of someone who would be in the village, a peasant. In contrast, the father and the man in the background was likely the jealous son, and the man furthest to the right have relatively expensive clothing, while the man while the person to the right is wearing fairly decent but not expensive clothing. Upon careful examination of the individuals in the painting, although this is meant to represent a joy situation, there's a strange sense of seriousness and gloom to the facial expressions of the surrounding people, attempting to pinpoint where exactly this event would occur in the painting. Considering the son is hiding his face in his father's clothes and the serious and surprised facial expressions of the surrounding individuals, it would be logical to conclude that the painting setting is right at the moment the father embraced the son prior to the father's reassurance which would lighten the mood of this context if it were added. The general mood of the setting and how everyone is generally feels is illustrated further by the fact that out of all six people in the painting, only one of them, who is an individual in the background directly behind the father, has any hint of smiling. While everyone else in the setting appears to be rather serious, considering that in the parable, the prodigal son arrived home to see his father, the stone-cut walls in the background are meant to represent the father's poverty, which further exemplifies his wealth. Focusing on the son, the set move will trace him in, in a relief state where he himself is not lost and reunited. Considering how he would, has his eyes closed on his knees and dirty, blistered and right foot, whereas both of them do not have any shoes, Rembrandt has performed a magnificent and help us as possible, all while putting him in a position where he's reunited with his father who has extra extravagant apparel. And his father is lowering himself to bend over to his son who is on the ground. Upon examination of the flooring, it is clear that the father and his son, son are standing upon stone, stone cut floors due to the angle and precision of the platform they are currently standing on. By contrast, the flooring to the right is barely noticeable, yet dark green and bumpy in texture, which implies that the man standing furthest to the right is standing upon grass. 
while there is a clear divide between the flooring and the ground. The fact that there is dirt and grass is further emphasized by the fact that there is leafy dark green texture to be seen in the background, which covers the pattern of the wall. Just to the right of the woman, there is a contrast between the tone of the brown used and the wall continues after it, which implies that the setting of the painting is just in front but adjacent to the father's door, considering that the door in the painting is just in front. Background to the end of the corner of the property. Pay atten paying attention to the woman in the background, as well as the man who is dressed to the right and behind the father, you can see that they have a higher elevation than the father. Although stairs cannot be seen in the painting, we can tell that upon further inspection that there is a contrast in elevation and distance, which allows the viewer to understand the, three, the aspect of the painting more. Although the setting likely takes place in a very dark time of day, revisiting the aspect of lighting, you can partially see light rating from the immediate left of the painting. Upon this investigation, it's more logically sound to assume that the source of light in question is a torch rather than the sun. But if the source of light is indeed the sun and not a torch, because the strength of the light is fairly weak, as illustrated by the light itself stretches from its epicenter to where the light does not reach a certain distance to give a considerable amount of light. Even if there was a generous attempt to explain that the source of light was the sun, and the importance as to whether the light source is a torch or not helps understand the sheer size of the father's property, and thus the wealth of the father in question. If, in fact, there is a wall to the left, back, and right of the painting, with the door being slightly to the right and relatively far away, considering that there's a tree and a relatively large building that are all the father's property, including the stairs, it'd be safe to assume that it's a garden or a place of, off, of open ground from the parable itself that this, he's celebrating his return. The great illustration of the property the father has in his painting, and how beggarly the particle sun looks, illustrates that the father is very humble despite all the wealth he has in order to afford his property, would bend over and lower his posture to embrace his son. Regarding the coloring, none of the colors portrayed are openly vibrant and appropriately so to the implied weakness of the assumed light torch, which is in this case most likely a torch. Because light in and of itself does not behave like the sunlight, neither does it cast rays. The discoloration of the assumed light source, the ground, the coloring of the skin, the ground, clothing, and the skin of the sun, as well as the redness of the father's clothes, implies that the light source is beige. In the essence, most likely during the daytime, the sun would cast a white light. The father's clothing would reasonably be more vibrant than what's being portrayed in the same of day. The story is about two sons. One son asks his father for his portions, so the father divides it among his two sons. After this, the young son gathered what he could and spent it in the other country and lived in poverty. In this context, he became so hungry he began to eat the things farmers feed the pigs. He thought to himself how even his servants and his, of his father had better conditions than he has. He didn't think it was worthy to come back to his father the way he was in the sonship status, so he wanted to ask his father to become a servant. When he returned to the property, his father ran to embrace him and kiss him. After the son told him how he's unworthy and sinned against him in heaven, his father told his servants to give him the best rope, to give him a ring, and to put sandals on him, and to also kill a fattened calf which in this context 
would have implied that they were going to have a feast with a freshly killed cow. The painting in and of itself portrays the moment when the father hugs the son. This painting biblically This painting is biblically accurate because the son does not have any shoes. Considering the parable the father told his servants to get his sandals on, and the fact that he is embracing the son. The full parable of Jesus concerning the prodigal son is located in chapter 15 of Luke, verses 11 through 32. However, the verse in and of itself portrays the verse 20. In the biblical context, this event is a parable of Jesus, and being a parable of Jesus implies that it's not necessarily a historical event but it's a story meant to give an understanding to more important things. After the exchange between the father and his son in the verses 20 through 24, the second half of the story is about the older son. In exchange with the older son in verses 25 through 32, the older son was in the field, but later went close to the house and heard music and dancing. So the elder son called one of his servants to ask what the celebration was about. And the servant told him about how his younger brother turned, and because of his anger he wouldn't go inside. The father then went to him and invited him, but the son talked about how he worked for the father and how many years and was loyal towards him, yet he was never given a kid so that he could celebrate with his friends. Next, the son explains to the father back after being lost and found again. Considering that the painting in it is, is made an inspiration of this specific parable, the overall message and purpose of the painting should indeed reflect the message of the parable. In the biblical context and straightforward point, the parable is meant to express how God is open to forgiving people for their sins if they're willing to come back to him, but also how God is a loving father figure to his children. Considering that God, according to the Bible, is omnipresent, representing, re repenting from our sins and turning to God and embracing him isn't something we're supposed to interpret as physically going to a certain location to return to God, rather, but to rather spiritually embrace God in love and trust. Considering the poor conditions of the prodigal son, this also helps illustrate the parable further because in the gospel, God offers sonship and for anyone to repent and accept the gospel to be a co heir of his kingdom, as well as a spiritual priest. When a person follows in their sin, they lose touch to their purpose and overall meaning of life. And as in the parable, we begin to dwell on dirty and unclean things which is symbolized by the sun eating things that the farmers feed their pigs. With God, we focus on his will for our overall purpose in life, with his, which is to please him. Furthermore, the two most greatest commandments according to Jesus is to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and the other is to love our neighbor as ourselves. Without love for God and others, our behaviors will begin to reflect that we don't love certain people and that naturally, at times, we pick and choose our favorite people over others and don't treat people with the same amount of respect, love, nor generosity we would with our close friends. Yet, as expressed in the parable, God will take us in if we repent, even if we come to him as in a filthy and broken state. The parable in gets its inspiration from has a threefold message, and our turning away from our purpose and calling can lead us into self-destruction and sanity and, self and the sense of hopelessness if we stray too far. The reflection of how God will embrace a sinner who comes to repentance and how self-righteousness and jealousy can make a person bitter-hearted and turn themselves away from the things we're celebrating, as well as the fact that self-righteousness can cause potential good works performed in their lifetime. In contrast to the sinner who might have done very little, who wholeheartedly visited Jesus and pursued relationship with him.
Britain. He was born in July 1606 and died in 1669 during the Renaissance era, which implies that he made Return of the Prodigal Son four years before he died. However, the exact dating of the painting in and of itself is controversial. Among skeptics, it's possible that the painting was really made around 1661. In 1621, Rembrandt became a pupil of Jacob von and set, and set up his own studio in 1625. He married his wife, Saskia von Uhlenberg, in 1634, four years before his father, Armin er Erntun, who was a miller, died in 1630. Rembrandt's hometown was in Leiden. During the time of his birth, Dutch merchants traded in the Far East in Antipodes. As a student, he completed his studies to the studio of Peter Lassman, who Rembrandt was a student under. Rembrandt was a Christian name, and according to Funk Walken's New World Encyclopedia, Rembrandt had a total of 600 sketches and paintings, and a third of his works are regarded biblical subjects. In Sub-Baramis, as well as the Parkle Sun, he was like to portray the subjects of his paintings. Rembrandt highly enjoyed his work as though he was lost in his work, and Michelle Emily describes Rembrandt drawing his engravings as a prayer, which implies that his works were close, so close to him they attribute his works and tributes and acts to worship. Rembrandt, apart from painting Saint, and paint St. Petersburg, he also made various sketchings concerning the story of the Parkle Sun and the ordering of the lines differs from his early works, and his works in the 1620s show clear influence from Peter Lassman. For minor notes, Rembrandt's work gained attention from Constantin Huygens. The painting in question can be found in the film Tools, which has some claw marks and is partially distorted, and his painting is acquired by Catherine the Great in 1766. Rembrandt von Rijn was a Christian man who was born in 1606 and died in 1669, and painted the Prodigal Son in 1661 according to those who are skeptical about the true dating of his painting, who made a total of 600 paintings and sketchings, with one third of those being biblically centered, and held, he held making those works a sacred proper to his faith. The painting is naturalistic in, in regards to the intention to detail. It makes an effort to emphasize the social status between the father and the son in terms of wealth. The biblical narrative is found in Luke chapter 15, which is a symbolic story about a man who comes from a wealthy family, voices his portion, and came back to his father worthily, yet with a repentant heart and was accepted by his father and ended up stirring jealousy by his older brother in the process. Thank you for listening to this presentation.